Hey, guess what? Einstein here. Is this world going to survive what's ahead? Nine. Is this world going to flourish without listening to this channel? Nine. Will the people end up all going underground? Yeah, according to the Bible. Do you want to know? Yay or nay? Nine. It's time to put on no more masks. It's time to get rid of fake Einsteins and fix your hair. Gee, what a mess. Welcome, love from love, hope from hope, and peace from our prince thereof. Robert Oppenheimer said, we knew the world would not be the same when he invented nuclear fission of which Zechariah in the word of God, I believe it's Zechariah 13, he predicts the day of battles of slaughter where eyes will consume away in sockets, tongues consume away in uh, the mouths, and flesh consume away as people stand. That's thermonuclear. And he said, uh, we knew it would not be the same. A few people laughed, a few people cried, most people were silent. And this is the day of the great bear of uh, Daniel 7, 5, chewing on three ribs, Crimea, Donetsk, and Luhansk. And then Putin has heard the words, now you may go eat all the flesh that you'd like. So he's already annexed one extra one now. And for anyone paying attention as I am, and this is the manifestation of the Antichrist of Daniel 11 and 12. A uh, vision of World War III, a time, times, and a half a time. And I am the latter day, Daniel. And it's time to report that Houston, we have a huge problem. We have a huge, huge problem. The problem is that the people back in Christ day did not recognize Elijah as being Elijah, which was John the Baptist who uh, prepared the Lord's way and they did not recognize him, and people are not recognizing me. And this will prove to be deadly and detrimental if people will not awaken to the tr utter truth of what I am presenting. Uh, it is foretold that if people do not listen to me, only death is ahead, and I give chapter and verse for it. Welcome, and it's time to realize that people are in trouble because the truth is their interpretation of Bible prophecy has been off since the beginning. Uh, there are two separate Elijahs foretold for the end time. One will bring a reign of murder and uh, death. That would be the original Elijah uh, with the original Moses. People, according to the word, would be rejoicing so much when they die, they'll be sending each other gifts. That's not them turning the children to the uh, hearts of children to the fathers, fathers to the children. That is the Elijah of Isaiah 28, line by line, precept by precept, with the strong and mighty one, the Elijah of the end time age, Shiloh, who carries the scepter of all authority, Genesis 49, 12, one whose eyes are red and dull of wine with milky white teeth because they're fake. It's time to listen or else we will be destroyed. And this world uh, will ne just no longer even be a little blue dot. Read Isaiah 24 uh, and you'll see the earth in peace is never to rise again. But yet the very next chapter, Isaiah 25, shows how people will end up overcoming anyways because the Lord is promising to cut these days short if we will react to his message of Malachi 3.1, which is him saying to all people, ending religion as it has been known as Hebrews 8 declares the obsolescence of all future faith based on the word of God, uh, because the Lord is saying to all of us, I am your God, you are my people, I forgive your iniquity, I will never remember it, I'll write my law and my love upon your hearts, beyond that none shall ever even need to be taught of me anymore, saith the Lord God, for all uh, who love are born of me and know me because I am loved. 
And so the truth is in this hour uh, that was given correctly to Israel and all mankind. And we got to shift things around. I have to reassign desolate heritages, Isaiah 49, 8. Chrislam now rises as the one world faith of the unconditional, hidden, now revealed uh, mystery of God, of the depth of his love. He's never loved us. He's always adored us deeply. Uh, and this has been veiled throughout, and there's explanation logical for all of it. And in this hour, the Lord is promising to remove the veil of the gross darkness of uh, love that has covered all mankind. Uh, wide is the way to hell paved by our conditional love, uh, where we practice every day becoming more and more desensitized as we let our love wax cold, as we rationalize and justify why it is okay not to be loving, why it is okay not to be kind and merciful and n not be a spiritual uh, bigot and a spiritual racist as most religious vipers are. And so in this hour, uh, it is time to realize that Sir Isaac Newton, who's out of this world as a scientist himself, he foretold me. He said about the time of the end, uh, the latter day Elijah, and he wrote books about the, the book of Daniel. Uh, he said the latter day Elijah Daniel would stand up insisting on his, uh, on his uh, how do you say, literal interpretation of Bible prophecy amidst much clamor and opposition. That's because everything is literal in the Word of God, and it's always been taken metaf more if metaphorically. And what happened, uh, distortions happen, and distortions will now be removed. It happened when early Christians grabbed the Kingdom Age covenant that was never given until the latter days, as Jeremiah 31 1 correctly prophesied. And uh, they stole it, and then they said, we are Israel and all mankind. But hey, in this hour when the covenant has now been given to Israel, they have now inherited all mankind. And for that reason, they are Chrislam. That is the new name that God has appointed to them through me, the latter-day Elijah, who restores all things by the word of God, unadulterated. And so it was said by the other scientist um, named George Kiat Kawiski, I am sure that at the end of the world, in the last millisecond of Earth's existence, the last human will see what we saw, and it was not good. Einstein, my hero, uh, this guy right here, I'm going to wear that in his honor. This is the word of Einstein. Can you dig it? I hope so, because he says the conflict that exists today is no more than an old style struggle for power once again presented to mankind in semi-religious trappings. The difference is that this time the development of atomic power has imbued the struggle with a ghostly character for both parties know and admit that should the quarrel deteriorate into actual war, mankind is doomed. <laughs> Can you dig it? The days that all people will have to go under the rocks uh, of underground as the book of uh, uh, Mark has foretold. Uh, all of mankind, the kings, the slaves, the this, the that, the Bible says, we'll have to go into the dens of the rocks because of nuclear winter. And uh, Emilio Segre uh, has said this. Uh, this is another physicist. Uh, he says, no one who saw it could forget it. A foul and awesome uh, display. And Rob, um, uh, this is all a thread all through every single scientist that saw this happening. Um, and uh, in an enterprise such as building the atomic bomb, um, he also says that the difference between ideas, hopes, suggestions, and theoretical calculations and solid numbers are based on measurement. That is paramount. But knowing that it will bring the annihilation of Earth, that is the highest peak of paramount. And, uh, oh, my favorite guy, this guy. He also says, 
nuclear power is one hell of a way to boil water. <laughs> I love it. It's true. That's actually what uh, Einstein says. I'm reading his quote. Uh, and uh, Richard Feynman, a very, phys a very famous physicist, said of nuclear war that we scientists are, s are clever, too clever. Uh, are you not satisfied? Uh, is four square miles in one bomb not enough? Just tell us how big you want that bomb to be. And uh, another good quote he said is that India can live without nuclear weapons. That's the dream of India. And it should be the dream of uh, uh, the U.S. also. Actually, that was Abdul Kalam said that. And all nations, according to the Mainua uh, Declaration in 1955, said all, they agreed that all nations must come to the decision to renounce force as a final resort of policy. If they are not prepared to do this, they will cease to exist. And Ronald Reagan, the president of the United States, he says, I call upon the scientific community in our country, those who gave us nuclear weapons, to turn their great talents now to the cause of mankind and world peace, to give us the means of rendering these nuclear weapons impotent and obsolete. And this is what he says must happen. My, my, my favorite guy. And are you ready for this one? Here it goes. Um, Albert Einstein, what a man. And one thing for sure, uh, he said, a world without nuclear weapons would be less stable and more dangerous for us all if they're insane. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, but Albert Einstein, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you a couple of Einstein quotes. Einstein, that's what I like about uh, this here. Einstein quotes. Um, the man was a utter genius, and anyone that doesn't listen to Einstein is a crazy. Life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. Weak people revenge. Strong people forgive. Intelligent people ignore. And I think because Einstein is now the focus of my uh, video here, we're going to call this the Einstein factor. Yay, there we go. And so, he says that we must learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. The important thing is not to stop questioning. He really says that. And uh, it's so true. And everybody is a genius, he says. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it's stupid. Don't do it. We are under condemnation by ourselves, and we need to understand that the Lord God does not condemn none of us as long as we don't commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit to the unforgivable sin of kicking love right out of us. Every knee will bow at the name of love. Every tongue will confess love, whom is Christ the Lord, who is God Almighty. And so Einstein was in on some of these secrets, and when he spoke, uh, he always said that we should not try, try not to become people of success, but rather we need to try to become people of value. Can you dig it? I hope you can. Because imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's attractions. So uh, I will be back in one moment. And I hope you are enjoying this Einstein factor, because it's going to get freaky. Hey, don't get stuck in the elevator no more, or Einstein says that you're going to have a headache. Don't do it. So get ready for this. And this is the probability of Jesus fulfilling 50 prophecies. And I'm going to read very quickly 50 that I have fulfilled personally. And the numbers would be exactly the same because uh, only the difference is uh, he fulfilled 300. I have fulfilled 60, 70. Uh, I'm always realizing new ones. And here it is. This is the from the quest.
Dr. Stoner's calculations were conservative and reasonable. For the first round, they considered eight most well-known prophecies: that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, that he would be crucified, that he would be betrayed for thirty silvers by a friend. After hours and hours of calculations, they found that the chance of any man that might have lived down to the 20th century and fulfilled all prophecies, all eight prophecies, is one in 10 to the 17th power. Now that's one with 17 zeros. Incredible! To help you visualize this number, if we laid these coins on the face of the UK and Ireland, they would cover the two islands 135 centimeters deep. What if I marked one coin and hit it somewhere on the face of the UK or Ireland, blindfolded you, put you on a helicopter, and all、uh, well, you can land anywhere you want, and good luck with finding the coin. But you have only one chance to find it. What's the chance that you, you're going to find it? It's one in ten to the seventeenth power. Just the same chance that the prophets would have had of writing these eight prophecies and having them fulfilled. In one man's life, from their time to the 20th century. Now, Doctor Stoner didn't stop here. He continued his calculations and added eight more prophecies to his list. Now, the chance that one man could fulfill 16 prophecies is one in 10 to the 45th power. Now,、um, I can describe this number to you, but I need some inspiration. Let's go. Now let's take this number of coins and create a solid ball out of them. You know how big would it be? The diameter of this solid ball would be nine billion kilometers. That is sixty times the distance between the sun and the earth. Imagine me marking one coin, hiding it somewhere, then I blindfold you and tell you that you have only one chance to find the marked coin. Would that be possible? And I wouldn't hide it on the surface of the ball. You might need to dig a couple of million kilometers in order to find the coin. What's the chance for finding the coin? Almost zero, or to be mathematically correct, one chance in ten to the forty-fifth power failures. Doctor Stoner wanted to extend his consideration beyond all human comprehension, and he considered forty-eight prophecies. Now he calculated with his team of six hundred science students that the chance. Of one man fulfilling forty-eight prophecies is one in ten to the hundred and fifty-seventh power. Can you imagine that number? I mean, this this、uh, coin is becoming like、um, too big to our example. Like, you can't fit that amount of coins in our universe. We must select a smaller object. Now, the electron is probably the smallest object that we can use in this example. Let's lay one quadrillion of electrons、uh, side by side in a one centimeter long line. I guess that's this, this much.、Thing. If we were going to count these electrons in this line, and if we counted day and night, two hundred and fifty electrons per minute. It would take us 7.5 million years to come from this end to this end. The electron is so small. Let's make a solid ball out of electrons with a diameter of 12 billion light years. Have we used up all our 10 to the 157th power electrons? No, we created such a small ball in a huge mass that we can barely see it. We 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 can create so many balls like this. Now, what if I marked an electron and hid it somewhere in the universe? What if I blindfolded you and sent you out into the universe in a rocket, hoping that you will stop at the right place where you could find this marked electron? What's the chance of that? It's 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 all zero, like that. No chance. It's impossible that one man could fulfill forty-eight prophecies. It's like finding that one marked electron in the universe, unless there is a divine being who knows the future. There is such a definite、Daniel. proof that God inspired the Old Testament writers that even, even the universe is not large enough to hold it. And do you know why? Because Jesus didn't fulfill only forty-eight prophecies; he fulfilled all three hundred.
amazing. Now, why is this important right back. for you and me? You know, the fascinating thing. Hey, I'm back. So, if we don't want to wear masks or death, we got to come to a conclusion here about who the hell is this guy on YouTube that's got uh, the world Guinness Book of Records for the most uh, ministry YouTube videos ever made on planet Earth. 12,000 in two years. And uh, no one's ever going to break that record. The only record, uh, the ones closest to that, uh, David Wood. Hey, David. <laughs> Never will debate me, you coward. And uh, same with you, uh, Dr. O'Wara of Repent and Prepare the Way, and you, Morg, official. You're all a bunch of cowards. And so in this hour, there are 50 prophecies of me, if I can find my... And here they go. I am from the north, Canada, Isaiah 41. I'm an alcoholic weed smoker of Genesis 49, 12, Shiloh, whose eyes are red and eats lots of visine from the weed. Uh, my soul is not upright, transgressed by wine, Habakkuk 2, but the just will live by my faith because there is no good man, Romans 3.10. Uh, Zechariah 3, I'm the alcoholic covered with barf, uh, who's picked to write the uh, flying scroll. I'm the writer of Isaiah 28, line by line, precept by precept, coming forth as a destroying storm, even as a, a hailstorm to pull down because of the appointment of Jeremiah 1.10 and Haggai 2.2 2 to do exactly that, the appointment of Jeremiah. I am the messenger of Malachi 3.1 and I am one just like Moses in Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, one who will lead another great exodus, the wheat, away from the tares, uh, as it is written in Acts 3. I am the writer of Revelation 14's flying scroll uh, and uh, uh, that is now put into the earth to reap it for the power of love who is our true Lord. All people of earth have a false God. They have a God of conditional love that has never existed. Love is only unconditional. They have a God who is a respecter of men, loves them best. You know that's false. And lastly, no one has the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible declares, I am the Lord God of all mankind. Uh, Jeremiah 32, 27, and Christ, the true one, instead of the false one of Christianity, he it, it declares, I am the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. And I win right there because no one has that Lord in this world. They have deviated far away. So I am the covenant messenger of Malachi 3, 1, preparing the Lord's way by his very own word. Uh, I am turning hearts of children to the fathers by telling them, don't uh, have just conditional love. That's not even real love at all. You got to have through it uh, kind of love and in spite of kind of love, not because kind of love or if or why. Uh, people are divorcing, divorcing everybody, not just spouses. Uh, you don't fit into people's uh, um, expectation. Uh, divorce them. Parents, sister, brother don't matter. And so uh, I am the revealer of Amos 7 uh, that the Lord God is now arising as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man, as he said in John 10, the true Christ, uh, because anyone that is not that Jesus is a false Jesus. Uh, and so I am the one that has been appointed to name Chrislam, Isaiah 62, to the new name of Israel because they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. I am the manifested hidden arrow of Isaiah 49. That whole chapter is about Elijah. Verse 4 proves that because uh, it says that I would come to realize everything I've done is in vain and I've been preaching two years to white noise here. I am the manifested hidden arrow that Christ uses as the white horseman of the apocalypse of Revelation 6. He has a crossbow, a bow just for me, longbow rather. Uh, and so in this hour, uh, I am the revealer of the Antichrist Putin, uh, the king of the north of uh, Daniel 11 and 12. Uh, and I am the revealer of the lawless one, Morg official, who has the 666 on his wall, who is a sword swallower, who is foretold to die by a sword in Revelation 13. I am the revealer of the false prophet, Dr. David Awara of Repair, 
repent and prepare the way who can be seen calling down fire in front of multitudes as Revelation 13 says. I am the revealer of uh, the lady of Revelation 12. She asks uh, of house of beloved and uh, make sure you watch her video called Apocalypse. It is finished. Uh, and uh, I am the revealer of the latter day mountain of Isaiah 25, the one covered with food. Uh, Isaiah 2 and Micah 4, where we must beat our sword into the sickle to learn the ways of war no more. I am the revealer that wide is the way to hell and paved by conditional love that has never been real. Narrow is the way to heaven paved with unconditional love. Therefore, we must beat our sword into the sickle, change our conditional love into true uh, unconditional love so that we can learn the ways of war no more. I am the revealer of earth's truest beginnings as Moses foretold and I have a new creation gospel that is recorded at this channel. Just punch in uh, everlasting gospel of Revelation 14. It'll pop up. It sounds just like Moses. Uh, I am bringing forth the manifestation of Isaiah 54 3 because I have given the covenant to all mankind and to Israel. Uh, I am the giver of the law of love in him saying, I am your God, you are my people, sending Satan straight to the pit when he says, and I forgive your iniquity and will never remember. And there went my moon. <laughs> it's time for a full moon. And if you are willing to have a moon, uh, it's time to look up. The Lord said that there would be signs in the heavens. Blood red moons have been happening for a reason. And if you Google uh, water turning red, water all over the earth is turning red in this hour. And I am the servant who has done everything in vain, Isaiah 49, 4. And that was never of Jesus. Uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he prophesied uh, our unity, he knew he was sending it to his latter-day Elijah messenger that would bring the refiner's fire of love because no one could ever debate me because they would have no root or branch left to hold on to. It would just prove that they have no appreciation or belief in the Word of God. There is no faith on planet Earth for prophecy. No one obeys the Bible or the Quran. Uh, Muhammad said no one has any ground to stand on unless they stand on the law, uh, uh, the prophets, and all revelation coming to them. Uh, Paul said concerning prophecy, it must be inspected most carefully and all that's good must be embraced. So for that reason, Isaiah 49, 8, I am the one to reassign our desolate heritages. I am a judge. Uh, and uh, the latter day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13 am I who has embraced my destiny as Elijah. And in those days, uh, now comes the shattering of the power of the holy people, Daniel 12, 7, because God's word was only closed till the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9. And in the days of Elijah, uh, Satan has been removed, Di Diablo, Beelzebub. Uh, and uh, Daniel 12, 1, he had to be removed or he would have instantly made God a liar. And I am the Latter-day Daniel uh, and who had the candlestick, the one candlestick of Zechariah lit. Uh, it was never plugged in for seven, eight minutes. God did a miracle for me because I had uh, manifested the verse in Isaiah 45 of things to come concerning the future of my sons and daughters and the work of my hands commanding me. And I commanded our Lord God. I told him, if you're going to use me, you're going to prove to me you're talking to me. And he, he did. Uh, and the, the two candlesticks, the two witnesses, that Elijah, uh, I don't even believe he will yet come. It's conditional. All prophecy is conditional, as Jonah 4 predicts. Uh, he, God told Nineveh, you're going to be destroyed in 40 days. And then he relented. He changed his mind. And it, for that reason, the most important verse in the whole word of God is Jeremiah 30, 24. For it is written, in the latter days it shall be considered that I, the Lord God, shall return my fierce, terrifying anger, if my people of love will be loving to one another and give him the Lord God that 
desire of his heart. And I am the revealer that these days of Noah are exactly like the ones declared the total oblivion of all man. Deuteronomy 18, Acts 3, Matthew 24, Zephaniah 1, 1, Malachi 4, 6, Isaiah 24. And in this hour, unless the great restoration of Acts 3, 21 happens, uh, Jesus Christ cannot come back. All these delusional Christians jumping up down. He's coming back now. He's coming back soon, soon, soon. No, he's not. Elijah comes first and restores all things. But because no one is paying any attention whatsoever to me, I truly have done everything in vain. And Jesus cannot return. This world instead will be destroyed and all people will have to go in underground before all life on earth is totally toast. And that is coming. These days are exactly like the days of Noah. Uh, and so I am the bringer of the revealer of God's offer to cut these days short. Uh, Jesus said he would in Matthew 24, 22. Uh, but he cannot if you will not listen to him. He said, who will come and feed the master's household food and meat while the master is away? Uh, I, Matthew 24, 45. And it's time for new food. It is the latter-day mountain of 12,000 videos that the Lord has now covered uh, for all people, the misunderstood marriage supper of the Lamb. And so, therefore, I am the revealer of the shattering of the power of holy people. Uh, Muhammad said in the latter days, his people of Islam would belong to another that sounds like Islam, it's Chrislam, uh, because of a book proving God's mercy, Jeremiah. And for that reason, he said there will never be another important prophet ahead. I am but a, a messenger as Muhammad was. Uh, and so Muhammad said uh, then that would remove all the distortions because what happened? Uh, Christians stole uh, the Hebrew books, then they stole their identity, said we are Israel, and they said all the prophecies for us. Even the prophecy of the Kingdom Age covenant, that was never given, ever. It was to be given in the latter days. It says so in Jeremiah 31. 1. And so I am the revealer of COVID, the trial of all flesh that's come to bring God's word of patience to keep us from the hour of the temptation not to change. And I am the prophet, uh, the revealer of the sickle of love for the harvest thereof that is happening now. And I am the revealer of Revelation's fire from heaven as seen uh, on YouTube by the false prophet uh, Dr. David O.R. You can Google it. And I am the revealer of the new Jerusalem. Uh, just Google images of New Jerusalem, NASA, and you will see the crystalline city uh, that reflects the sapphire sea, the bottomless blue ocean of the forgetfulness of the Lord's forgiveness. And upon this latter day mountain, the Lord desires to remove all shame, all guilt by his forgiveness, as it is written in Isaiah 25 and Jeremiah 31 to remove the yoke of uh, unloving religious bondage from off of us, and it, that is written. And if everyone, uh, if all that I'm saying is true, then peace could come. And so I am therefore the revealer also that earth was made with very great age, and that Charles Dickens there, uh, Charles Darwin, he uh, recanted all of his theory. It was always poppycock. And for that reason, you can Google a T-Rex blood cell and see the blood cell in the vein. God never hated us in the beginning. I'm the revealer of that. Uh, and he